In the last quarterly film report on the Atlas program at Convair, progress was shown for the first three months of 1956 on the major phases of systems integration, acceptance testing of the electronic components to be carried by the test missiles, methods used in manufacturing and modifying these components, research and development on missile design using full-scale articles, and advances made in setting up the pattern of fabrication on the Atlas assembly line. The first quarterly film report for 1950. At Kaiser Steel's fabrication division in Montebello, California, the shop turned out the prefab sections of a missile service tower for stand S-1 at the Sycamore Canyon off-site static test facility. Kaiser Steel is representative of the many subcontractors to Convair throughout the country who are furnishing the various items of handling and ground equipment which will be integrated into the program. These sections will form a tower 125 feet high, 62 feet long, and 20 feet wide, weighing approximately 125 tons. All of the towers at the off-site facilities are included in the contract for ground support equipment, and the status of their construction will be shown in the division of this film report concerned with general progress of facility items. The flame deflector for stand S1 was manufactured to Convair specifications by Cunningham Steel Company in San Francisco and delivered at San Diego on May 18th in prefab sections. This item, a curved 90-degree duct, is built to deflect, cool, and disperse rocket engine exhaust approximately 20 feet from the thrust chambers of missiles under test to prevent destruction to the test stand or damage to equipment. At Basic Tool in Gardena, California, the first of five booster handling trailers was manufactured and made ready for delivery on April 26th. The trailer is designed to transport a missile booster assembly and mate it with a missile tank in a horizontal or vertical position. On delivery at San Diego, this trailer was used to move a booster from Convair's Building 4 to Stand 1-4 at Edwards Rocket Base and mate the booster with the battleship tank contained in the stand. In the receiving area near Building 4, these power distribution trailers were delivered in April on schedule. Weighing approximately two and a half tons each, these trailers are designed to provide power sources and distribution equipment for energizing the missile during system tests when it is remote from the secondary electrical distribution center at the test stand. There will be one of these units available for use with each Series A missile. Other items of ground equipment will appear in following divisions of this report. This is an artist's conception of the new facility for Convair Astronautics. There will be a one-story factory building containing half a million square feet of workspace, two six-story office buildings, other buildings and laboratories. The facility will be located near Montgomery Airfield, north of San Diego. Construction will start this summer, and the center will be ready for full occupancy by the fall of 1957. Missile production at this autonomous facility will be three units per month on one shift, five per month on two shifts. The facility will be laid out to provide the best possible environment for the 6,600 engineering, production, and administrative personnel that will be employed here by 1958. Convair Astronautics will also house the laboratories and offices of Convair Scientific Research Laboratory. The Convair engineers and technicians work closely with personnel in the newly formed Scientific Research Laboratory, which actively supports the academic approach to technical areas of interest to the company. The professional members of the laboratory provide scientific assistance in their own specialty and serve as a link with the corporation staff of scientific consultants, representing the best thinking in the scientific world as it may affect management, engineering, and scientific research in Convair. Most of their time devoted to Convair has been spent in work on the Atlas program. In order
order to provide adequate workspace for personnel currently employed on the Atlas program in Building 4 at San Diego, construction was started during the quarter on the 100,000 square foot mezzanine. Some sections will be complete the first week in July. The mezzanine will be ready for full occupancy by August 31st, 1956, making it possible to consolidate the activities of engineering and administrative personnel located in other buildings at Convair's Plant 1. At the Point Loma test site, experiments continued during the quarter to check the predicted performance of complete and partial missile structures and attendant ground support equipment. Structural tests were conducted with a prototype of the Sycamore hold-down launcher by assembling the complete units and applying hydraulic loads to attach points. During the last of June, the Sycamore article was installed on the base plate for three weeks of proofing. During these tests, a load of 228,000 pounds was applied to the main attach point and opposed by a force 1.8 times the anticipated maximum for a total load of 410,000 pounds, while the opposite hold down attach point was loaded to 300,000 pounds. The launcher passed these tests satisfactorily. In order to check the structural integrity of the missile under extreme conditions, combined ultimate pressure and heat tests were conducted with the intermediate sub tank constructed of the same thin-gauge stainless steel. Pressures reached were 75 PSIG in the aft section of the tank and 66 PSIG in the forward section, which contained liquid nitrogen. By using a belt of heat lamp, the external surface was heated to 385 degrees Fahrenheit in the bulkhead area. Data collected during this test indicated the missile would not be affected by anticipated extremes of pressure and heat. In Tower C, on the left, constructed during the first quarter of 1956, test equipment was installed and a series of 13 spring constant tests was started the 1st of June. Seven of these tests were completed by the end of the quarter, using these hydraulic rams to apply loads to the aft thrust structure. The complete aft section of the missile will be structurally evaluated in this stand. Tower D, on the right, will be used to operationally check the release characteristics of the launcher. This stand was completed during the quarter and is ready for operation. At the Sycamore Canyon off-site static test facility near San Diego, construction on the service tower for stand S1 was started the 1st of April. The first production units of each missile series will be captive fired at this site prior to shipment of subsequent articles to the flight test base. Here the technicians will detect and correct possible malfunctions that might appear during pre-launch and hot firing. As part of missile system development, this comprehensive test program of partial and complete missiles with their necessary ground support equipment will provide reliable articles for the flight test program. On May 18th, the flame deflector was installed in the test stand. This deflector has a primary water manifold at its top with a capacity of up to 30,000 gallons per minute at 100 PSI static. A secondary water manifold surrounding the duct provides water for skin cooling through orifices in the inner walls of the deflector. Mounting provisions are the only significant difference between this flame deflector and other long-duration flame deflectors provided by the contractor. By the end of the quarter, utility and erection hoists were installed in the tower. Installation of the fire X, electrical, and elevator systems was underway. The tower will be completed on July 28, 1956. The first test missile for the A series is scheduled to arrive in August for checkout in the assembly building at Sycamore Canyon. Farther north, at Edwards Rocket Base, California, the battleship tank manufactured by Willamette Iron and Steel Company in Portland, Oregon, was installed in stand 1-4. This heavy-walled tank is used to avoid extensive changes in internal tank instrumentation. Provisions for holding the tank at various operating levels have been designed into the tower, which is 100 feet high, anchored to the concrete test stand, and fitted with load cells used for weight, thrust, and side load measurements. The heavy-duty steel structure for the tower at 1-4 is designed to resist an upward thrust of 675,000 pounds with six degree gimbling, seismic and dynamic forces of 0.02 g lateral, 0.5 g upward, and 2 g downward. 
This firing stand, the first to be activated, will be used primarily for testing the missile propulsion, propellant, hydraulic, and pneumatic systems. This special control unit was constructed to pressurize the battleship tank with a range of pressures which will simulate pump inlet pressures encountered during high longitudinal accelerations occurring in flight. Scheduled studies at stand 1-4 include geysering, vortexing, line pressure drop, pump inlet pressure variations, and heat exchanger characteristics. The first Lox water blowdown test was conducted on June 20th, 1956, on schedule. This test was of one second duration, run in the main stage. All test objectives were not satisfied, and the remaining task was rescheduled. On June 22nd, a six second Lox water blowdown test was successfully conducted. During these tests, a gas generator is fired to power the turbo pump. This type of run provides calibration data, functional checks of systems, and experience in conducting a run with much less hazard than a full hot firing. The first hot firing at stand 1-4 is scheduled for July 1956. Stand 1-1, 1 1-2, and 1-A are being constructed by the Corps of Engineers. This was stand 1-1 on the last day of the quarter. Its initial mission is to investigate missile reliability prior to flight. Stand 1-2. This stand will be used as a flight backup stand after first missile flight, including limited environmental simulation and qualification testing in its later phases of test. This is the foundation for Edwards rocket base stand 1-A capable of performing the test missions assigned to stands 1-1, 1-2, or those accomplished prior to launch at AFMTC. It will be capable of evaluating the complete missile and support equipment. During the early part of the program, it will be necessary to use this stand to expedite pre-flight evaluation of systems compatibility. However, once missiles are sufficiently reliable for flight, the stand will be used for specialized tests of those items which improve flight capabilities, such as a microwave flame attenuation study program. Inside the blockhouse for stand 1-A, installation was well underway on the electrical equipment needed for control of ground operations of the missile on the test stand. This equipment will energize, operate, and monitor missile ground service systems and the missile propulsion system before static firing and for the duration of engine run. This equipment will also make it possible to control and monitor individual or collective system functions. About two miles from the blockhouse for stand 1-A, construction by the Corps of Engineers was started on the high risk site. Since there is no available data that can be used to accurately predict the potential explosive blast of the missile propellant, this site is being built to determine the blast magnitudes of complete missile tanks under several possible methods of failure. The MSD program will provide a number of intact missile tanks that might experience fatigue failure under extreme conditions, and these tanks will be used for testing here. Missile number one, the first MSD article available, thing J on the left, was completed last quarter. By May 24th, the exteriors of both storage buildings were complete, and the foundation work was underway on building K on the right. Buildings L and M will go up in the area to the rear. At the launching site, construction continued on schedule at the blockhouses for pad 12 and 14. By April 29th, three sections of the haunch for pad 14 had been poured, and the forms and reinforcing bar were in for the remaining sections. The haunch, 12 feet wide and 5 feet high, provides the foundation for the blockhouse dome which will be covered by a cushion of sand about 10 feet thick, held in place by three inches of gunite. The first section of the dome for pad 14's blockhouse was poured on May 14th. Here, two weeks later, forms and shoring for the fourth section of the dome are put in place. The concrete dome is five feet thick at the top of the blockhouse, six feet thick at the haunch. The entire dome is supported by a steel beam on a cushion of vermiculite. This beam is designed to fail in the event of an explosion of a missile on the stand, allowing the plastic to absorb the shock on the dome structure. 
Observation of the firing area from the blockhouse will be provided by four periscopes. At the launching site for pad 14, 800 feet from the blockhouse, pilings were driven to reinforce the earth beneath the sand surface. By the end of the quarter, a total of 130 piles had been set in place, varying in depth according to their position in the sand structure. In this area, directly under the flame deflector, the concrete for the sand's base will be 10 feet thick and 18 feet wide. On May 28, this was the status of the firing complex for pad 12, south of pad 14. The ready room was completed, and the haunch was finished. At the end of the quarter, the fourth section of the dome was being poured. Beneficial occupancy date for this blockhouse has been set at November 1, 1956. In San Diego, at Convair's Building 4, the autopilot test stand was sufficiently complete by the middle of April to begin the autopilot test program. Concurrent with preliminary testing, stand buildup was continued, and minor stand modifications and improvements were incorporated during early May. Full-scale testing on gimbling the engines and the yaw axis was started in the middle of May, continuing through the rest of the quarter, and the Vernier engine was installed and checked out. This test program will permit studies leading to the development of a satisfactory flight autopilot system. On the compatibility test stand in Building 4, Convair technicians checked the compatibility of DOVAP and missile propulsion controls with General Electric guidance equipment. In these tests, a sequence of a countdown on propulsion controls was made by Convair, while the GE resident engineers checked their equipment for interference. The GE equipment, which must be integrated into the system, consists of the rate beacon, pulse beacon, and decoder. A test oscillator for use on the first missiles to check flame attenuation was also evaluated. Preliminary runs were made during the quarter, and the general electric equipment was removed to incorporate the most recent design improvements. On April 17, 1956, the Point Loma test article was moved from the final assembly dock in Building 4. The missile handling trailer, seen in previous film reports, was used to transport the missile to the Point Loma test site. This item of ground handling equipment is also intended for use as a shipping cradle with undercarriage removed during ship or rail transport. It is designed to make a 90-degree turn from a 34-foot lane to a 34-foot lane and its maneuverability is evident here as the missile is moved over a route leading through the small business and residential section of Point Loma. This was the first time a missile of the Series A configuration was moved outside the plant area, and no problems were encountered on the trip to the Point Loma test site. On April 20th, in the final assembly dock in Building 4, a method of entering a completed missile for internal modification was evaluated. With the aft end of missile 3T secured, a stretch load of 12,000 pounds was applied at the nose. It was determined that this procedure would enable workers to enter the missile without damaging the skin section. On May 23, 1956, the DEI on the B-series missile took place in the mock-up area of Building 4. The primary purpose of the A-series is to test the booster propulsion system. With the addition of a sustainer engine to the cluster, it will be possible to test the full propulsion system as it will exist in the operational missile. Other new features incorporated in the B-series are the separation of both the warhead and the engine compartment structure, the rearrangement of test equipment in the pod, and the addition of a 25-second vernier engine which will control pitch and yaw in addition to roll. The results of the DEI were very satisfactory with only 13 RFAs being introduced, most of them of a minor nature. The suggested changes are now being incorporated in the final design of the missile. Final assembly area, May 23, 1956. Tank 3T in the background, Point Loma article on the left, the Sycamore missile on the right. Next to the dock, engines were being installed in the thrust section for missile 1A and 2A. 
On June 28, 1956, there were five missiles in final checkout. On the last working day of the quarter, June 29th, Missile 1A, slated for delivery to Sycamore Canyon in August, was moved from mating dock number two to number five, one step closer to final checkout. Moved as a complete unit, this prototype for Series A missiles will go into final checkout in July 1956. It will be hot-fired at the Sycamore Canyon Static Test Facility in October 1956, a significant milestone in the research and development program leading toward first flight tests April 1957.